It's Thursday evening. I'm recording this the day before, which tomorrow, the day you're watching it. When I upload this, will be Friday. And, uh, Way of the Wizard uh, by Deepak Chopra. Chopra. I still haven't looked up and heard how people pronounce it. Anyway, one of my favorite books. Taught me a lot in my life. I've had multiple copies. And here I am sharing it with you guys uh, since I finished up the Toltec Prophecy sharing with you. Let's get on with it. Because I got something on the skillet and I don't, it's just slow, but still, uh, the more I don't mess around and keep babbling and get to reading, the better I am. Or better this video will be, huh? <laughs> Here we go. How to learn from the wizard. Now remember, this is still part of the introduction. How to learn from the wizard. There are 20 lessons in this book, each told from the wizard's point of view. At the beginning of each lesson are some aphorisms, pithy bits of the wizard's wisdom to help, your tran to help you transcend ordinary reality. Read each one and let it sink in. Don't wait for a result. Just allow, just allow yourself the experience. You don't have to work or apply effort. Effort is like struggling to get out of quicksand. It only pulls you in deeper. The inner wizard wants to speak, and this is true for all of us. But the wizard needs a chance and opening. Like Zen Cohen's amorphisms, Provide that opening by causing a shift in perception, which can trigger a shift in personal reality. The wizard's voice needs to be brought back into daily life. I've quoted the first sentence of the first lesson. A wizard exists in all of us. This wizard sees and knows everything. The rest of the lesson goes as follows. The wizard is beyond opposites of light and dark, good and evil, pleasure and pain. Everything the wizard sees has its roots in the unseen world. Nature reflects the moods of the wizard. The body and the mind may sleep, but the wizard is always awake. The wizard possesses the secret of immortality. If these words give you a faint tingle, a thrill of recognition, they have done their work. It is indeed thrilling to discover that you are not a constricted being, but a child of the miraculous. That is the truth. The one deep fact about each of us that has been in eclipse far too long. I've gathered together about a hundred such sayings, which are illustrated by stories from the world of Merlin and Arthur. These are not fragments from the old legends, but parables I have set in that time. Sometimes the illustrative story doesn't seem to fit the um, uh, afor <coughs> aphorisms Exactly or without or with perfect logic. That is deliberate because the linear mind with its need to create order isn't the only part of yourself that is going to walk the wizard's way. You're going to walk it in imagination, in hope, in creativity, in love. In short, the wizard's way is the way of spirit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But spirituality isn't opposed to rationality. It is the larger framework that reason fits into, one piece among many. To speak, the line to, speak to the linear mind, I've provided a section called Understanding the Lesson, which supports the aphorisms and the stories. Lastly comes Living with the Lesson, in which I help you allow the wizard's wisdom to sink into your own experience. And, uh... 
Give me just a second. Well, yeah. No biggie there. <laughs> Sorry to break your train of thought, but I had I went ahead and just turned the eye off. Still it in the burgers cook. Okay. And we will just pick it right back up here. Living with the lesson is the active part of the wizard's way. My suggestions are simply a beginning. Ways to speak your own participation. Ways to spark your own participation. Ultimately, it is your understanding that is going to change your reality. Living with the lesson includes... Some exercises that may seem passive because most of them are thought experiments. What is a thought experiment? It's a way of leading your mind into new places, making it see new th or making it see things differently. The wizards knew something deep and important. If you want to change the world, change your attitude toward it. Einstein once lay on a couch, closed his eyes, and saw a man traveling at the speed of light. Following up. On this intriguing image, he began to conduct various thought experiments, seemingly mere musings. Within a few years, however, the attitudes of the whole scientific world would be transformed as nature itself confirmed Einstein's transcendent visions. If a fantasy on a couch can alter the world, then there must be tremendous power in thought experiments. Nothing is truly learned until it is lived. Reason experience, spirit, once these come together, the wizard's way is open. The stage is set for alchemy. The wisdom inside you is like a spark that once lit can never be extinguished. To put it all together, I suggest the following approach. One, sit quietly for a moment before you read any particular lesson. Two, read the aphorisms and then sit for a few minutes to absorb them. Reread them as often as you like. Allow yourself an opportunity for your own reactions and insights. These are often the most valuable things you can receive. Go and read the rest of the material. That's number three. Go and read the rest of the material for that lesson. The Merlin and Arthur story, the section called Understanding the Lesson, and the section called Living with the Lesson. Four, if living with the lesson contains a practical exercise, most do, give yourself a few minutes to do the exercise. It is helpful to repeat it throughout the day if you want to get the full experience. Reread each lesson as often as you want. One or more times, take a day or a week to live with it. There is no timetable for this process. I'd only caution that you should live with each lesson for at least one day rather than rush to absorb too many at a time. And that's uh, where I'm going to leave off. The next segment of the introduction is going to be the seven steps of alchemy before we get into actual stories and the lessons. But, um, or lesson one, which will be, they start with a little story. It's, you know, a tidbit of Merlin teaching Arthur something. And then you'll have the second part, understanding it. And then the third part, be living with it or trying to, you know, learning how to apply it into your own personal daily life. Anyway, blessings to everybody. And, uh, until next time, Mr. Cloud, Sage of the Eternal Moment, over and out. Ditto.